appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 49. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building for episode 49. Introduce yourself to the audience. Jock Johnson of the Jock Johnson podcast and the upcoming solo show podcast. CEO, y'all. In I don't the know building. Where you're coming from, Oak. Coming from Jackson, Mississippi area. Um, Little small town right outside of Jackson, uh, Brandon, Mississippi. So I'm repping the state of Mississippi, y'all. Shouts out to Mississippi. This is my second Mississippi collaboration. Been fucking with home for the last couple of years. Always, always been showing love. Uh, yeah. Been trying to make this collaboration happen for a while. Glad to have you all finally. Oh. Yeah, I appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you. All right, so let's get through the rundown. Uh, H2H Cleaning. H2H Cleaning is the cleaning company. You follow that at H2H Cleaning on Instagram. We are here to help. All right. Uh, Custom Hustle Jerseys. Custom Hustle Jerseys is my clothing line. You already know how that works out. You pick your own names, numbers, colors, and all of that, and we get it shipped out to you in and out of the country, in and out of the town. Also, we now have the jackets. Custom jackets are now available as well. Prices vary on the jackets because it depends on what you want on it, how many things you want on it. You want stripes, colors, stars, however you want that to work out. We can make it all happen for you. you it just gets to be at a price, uh, but it's very well <laughs> worth it. And again, in and out of the country, in and out of the city. Um, how to Hustle a Live Show. How to Hustle a Live Show. Live Show is coming up February the 20th. Get your tickets now. I got the physical tickets if you're in the city. I got the event right up for those who are out of town, coming into town for the show. Shouts out to everybody that's supposed to be sliding into town for the show. Uh, but that is at 4901 Catherine Street at the barn. 4901 mm-hmm. Catherine Street out at the barn. Uh, come down. Tickets only $15. And we're going to have a very interactive show that day. Uh, a lot of things planned for the show. Shout out to my sponsors on the show, Khadija Soul Food. She's going to be in there with the desserts. Uh, my cousin got the uh, Cloud 10 Treat. She's going to be in there with all the Cloud 10 needs for your edibles. And we have a scented candle. A scented candle is going to be in there to get you smelling good and just right after you're know saying you didn't have an edible or two in a cheese pie drink or something from Khadija. <laughs> um, now let's go through the rundown. E Block Radio Network. Every Monday on the E Block Radio Network at 2 o'clock. GFT Radio Network, 2 o'clock every Tuesday. Wednesday, 8 a.m. and p.m. on the Kickback app that is Central Standard Time. Thursdays, WTNUPhilly.com, 1230. Uh, Friday, the I Say Podcast Radio Network at 10 a.m. and the THC Radio Network every Saturday at 10 a.m. Seven cities, seven days is what the goal was always. And we almost there, just to let y'all know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you up ready? You ready? Uh, on episode forty nine, Bruce. The rundown is done. Uh, how important are you? Man, that's, that's the topic for episode forty nine. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> I important man. I I feel like I'm very important man. I know maybe not to some other people, but I feel like I'm important uh, because yeah, if you don't believe in yourself or be true to yourself. You know why? You, why you're not gonna feel like you're important? So uh, my bad, I didn't lay this out all the way correct. Um, how important are you as pertaining to all relationships, all aspects of your life? Whether we talk on mm-hmm. work, we talk on the kids, we talk on the wife, we talk on any of those different situations, yeah. relationships yeah. with your friends. Just yeah. you know, how important do you make yourself in all of these different situations? My bad. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm very important to my family. You know what I'm saying? Um, very important because um, I'm I'm the the king of the castle, you know what I'm saying? I'm the king. And, uh, and um, you know, I, I feel like, you know, by me being a, the, the head man of the household, I have to be on my game. Uh, I have to make sure that uh, I'm a positive role model for my kids too. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and then, and then for my wife, you know, uh, she leaned on me a lot, but you know, I have to uh, sometimes, you know, let them know that, you know, it's it's not all about just leaning on me all the time. You know, you got to you got to be able to step up and hold up if something goes down with me. Where I, to a point where if something happens, you got to be able to carry on. So um, I got four sons, and um, oh, get yeah. them out, God damn. <laughs> Yeah, I got four. I got I got four sons, man, and two of them they're on their own. One of them uh, 
lives in Boston, Massachusetts. He recently got married. Um, his wife is in the military. They're stationed in Boston. And of course, my uh, next to oldest, uh, he's 21. He's been on his own uh, for two years now. So he's doing his own thing. And of course, I got my, my youngest two uh, still in the house. One of them, <laughs> I'm trying to get them out of here, man. But uh, one of them uh, is a junior in high school and uh, I got an eighth grader. So I have about to say be- one like 13. You trying to get yeah. him out already? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He eating up everything, man. <laughs> He's a year that he had that stage right now. The yeah. metabolism is on a beam right now. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, you know, yeah, I'm, I, I feel like I'm very important uh, in, in a lot of ways um, to people, um, family members, especially, and some friends. And uh, I've lost quite a few friends um, that, that really looked up to me. And, and, and you know, uh, that's something I deal with on a daily basis, too, man. You know, just the thought of losing my, my best friends like brothers and, and they're not here anymore. And, um, you know, it, it, I try to stay busy, keep my mind off of that. But, um, man, yeah, I feel like I'm important in a lot of ways, man. Very important. Right. Right so here's where I'm going with my answer for this, because the way that I was like kind of throwing it out is like uh, how much uh, of an emphasis do we put on ourselves? It's mm-hmm. really kind of ties back to the episode with Barb. Shouts out to Barb. I believe that was episode 46. It was the last episode of uh, 21. Yeah. But it was how do you protect yourself from yourself? So now this one would be kind of the inverse of the situation where it's like, how much of an emphasis do you put on you? Now, as far as it goes, like the same situation, like you're saying with your family, it's always, or should be, not always, 2022 niggas do things differently these days, uh, that the man should be head of household. So that means the wife and the kids should lean towards you as you know the person who's the problem solver to get shit done type of guy and like you said yeah i need my wife to pick up the shortcomings if things ain't happening to work out this way something might you never know what the hell happens two flat tires or you know oh, hot right. water heater burst you never know this yeah. is why i never understand when people always go to like so i was supposed to spend all my money and she just get to blow hers why is she blowing hers why did you marry her that's a definite <laughs> topic though um what we're trying to get to though here like i said is um how much of an emphasis do you put on you and for me as a person who I'm the person who everybody leans to. Yeah. So I was always putting myself behind a lot of people in a lot of different situations. Notice that I'm saying was and was past tense. Uh, Cause I was always like, this one is in jail or that one's in jail. Well, I can send him some money and make his situation easier. I'm on the street and can make things happen for myself. If he tries to make something happen, this could get him some more time or damn, they're going to cut her lights off. Let me help my cousin out with this or just any of those different type of situations. And then always just putting yourself in a fucked up situation. So then when I ended up yeah. myself into a bad situation, it was like, ain't got nobody to turn to. Right. Which opened my eyes to go stop doing that shit to yourself and put it more of an emphasis and an importance with yourself mm-hmm. because all you're doing is fucking it up for you and nobody else is putting themselves in an uncomfortable situation for you. So that took, uh, it took some years and it took some growth and it took some evolution uh, and myself personally to recognize that and then to uh, implement it into my day to day. Even as far like uh, this is something that me and you always talk about, like off mic situations is with the podcast. Yeah, um, yeah. This is why I pulled myself out of my old situation is because I felt as though I'm going above and beyond and doing a lot of different things. And I don't feel that it was being reciprocated. Mm-hmm. Um, so, again, to put the emphasis on myself and to put mm-hmm saying I got these type of goals and aspirations and things that I want to do with this and I know that I can get there if I depend on me if I make this about me and me doing it I know that I ain't gonna let myself down in this situation and I I totally understand that shit you know what I'm saying because um you know I'm all about you know I I'm so I'm not gonna say emphasis emphasize or whatever but um I've, I've, man, since I've been doing this podcast thing, man, um, my focus has been really into it, really into it. And um, my mind is working like clockwork day and night. I'm always thinking of ways to uh, to try to make the podcast better, make the shows better. And uh, I know you that. To. Yeah, that too, man. And, you know, um, that's, that's why I, I guess I'm called a mastermind because I'm thinking in my sleep, man. I'm always thinking about 
the podcast, you know. Yeah, I think about my family and all too, but I think about this podcast because uh, this is something I really want to do. And I do understand that everybody is not going to like or do what you do. I, I everybody totally, doesn't have the same, everybody they doesn't have, see, everybody doesn't have the same passion, drive, and they don't all see the vision. Right, right. Which is perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. But uh, like you said, my whole hour of my days every day is my banner right now. I'm doing custom hustle, I'm doing some Jersey shit right now. Somebody's texting me about a Jersey. Yeah. Um, but Everybody doesn't see it and everybody doesn't have a mind for it. It'd be so many little things that I'll think about or pick up on. Like I always tell people like, shit, I can have a conversation with my daughter mm-hmm. and my daughter, she'll be nine. I think when this episode comes out, in fact, yeah, she'll be nine. Happy birthday, Kyle. Mm-hmm. Um, so me and her can have a conversation. Her and one of my little cousins are having a conversation and there's a topic in there. If you're thinking about it. If you really like got your mind on this shit, if you really want this shit to work, you really want to turn this into a business, you got to treat it like a business. You got to treat it like it's important. You can't treat it like it's the hobby that we got on Fridays or Saturdays or Tuesdays or whenever the hell anybody records. Totally agree. That was one of those things that I tackled on uh, the How to Hustle seminars. Seminars are still available. You can purchase Mm -hmm. those, you know, uh, at the same cost that they were originally. But um, that was one of the things we tackled on there was treat it like mm-hmm. a business. You got to treat it like it's important. You got to treat yeah. it like it's something that you really want to do. Because if yeah. your job told you you got these checkpoints to hit all week, you hitting these checkpoints every day. Right. Why wouldn't you attack this the same way when you can turn this into a career? Right. And and I, I'm not looking at this shit as a hobby, man. You know, I, I tell tell people that shit all the time. And I know that the people that do know me and know that I, I hard I work trying to uh, – continue to make this thing better they know that i'm about business with this podcast shit and and i love doing what i do um and you got to treat it like a job if you you know you got you got to treat it like a nine to five man if you want to be successful in doing it uh and there's no hobby i mean yeah i love doing it and i like i notice when i'm doing my own thing you know i'm working on shit by myself i'm i'm at my best you know i'm at my best man and, and, and See, I enjoy is, doing it. This is why I brought this up. This is the topic that I wanted to discuss with you. Because like I said, this is a conversation that you and I have had up too many times to count on the phone mm-hmm. about uh, about different ways to tackle these uh, situations and about podcast business type shit. And it was like, mm-hmm. how important are you going to make it? If you feel as though this thing is important and you got to step out and you got to do there's mm-hmm. necessary steps to make it important. There's no mm-hmm. ill feelings. There's no ill will or nothing no. like that. This is, it's not personal. This is business. And mm-hmm. this is only business if you treat it like business. Mm-hmm. I ain't got no issues and no problems with nobody yet. Oh, I left. Those are my brothers since 1987. It's going to always mm-hmm. be that way. Yeah. I ain't got a bad thing to say about nobody. It's just business and not personal. That's right. And that's, that's the way it should be. Um, and I know that, you know, um, with groups, you know, you're going to have your differences and all with, with groups and all that. I mean, that's come with territory when you got different attitudes and, and views and on, on different mm. things. I mean, I totally understand that. But as as a group, man, you know, if, if you're definitely trying to be successful at, at, at with this podcast thing, man, you, you're really trying to be successful with it. You got to get in and grind together and, and push this shit. That's one of my mottos. Keep pushing. And... Um, I'm keep it's pushing one of those things that I always tell people is uh, I got no problem pulling a rope with you. Mm-hmm. As long as we both look down and our hands are scarred. Mm-hmm. If we look down and my hands are scarred and your hands is clean and you still got lotion on your joints, we got issues. Cause that means mm-hmm. you ain't pulling. You just mm-hmm. standing there holding. <laughs> like, I don't need nobody to stand here and hold. I need somebody else to pull. But, um, so like I said, I don't want this. This wasn't even just a podcast topic. This was about all aspects. So yeah. this is one of those things. Uh, also, when you have kids, how do you balance that as far as uh, taking care of yourself? Because once you have kids, it got to be about these kids. Yeah. Well, some people. But then again, like I said, it's 2022 shit. People will be like, fuck my kids. I got to take care of me first type thing. Even with no, babies. That, that, you know what? That That's my main priority is my kids, man. My kids are my life. I don't know about anybody else, but, um, you know, it's important to me to, I'm, I'm thankful to even be here to still, you know, be in their lives, man, because you got guys that that's alive hell and don't even be in the kid's life. But, you know, mm-hmm. um, they look up to me, you know, it, it makes me, happy as hell man especially my kids are involved in sports they play football 
And, you know, for them to look up in those stands and see his, their pops up in the stands, that makes them even go harder, man. And, um, and I teach them uh, the qualities of being a, a decent young man. My kids, nobody can say anything bad about my kids. If they're doing shit, I don't know about it. But um, for the most of it, as a father and as parents, of course, my wife, we did, we've done a great job. We'll continue to do a great job with them. And, and if you ever meet them, man, you'd be like, man, these kids, are they really, they really been taught. See, they really like been taught. You, see, like you just said, for me, uh, your kids are going to be influenced by something, mm-hmm. whether it be the classroom, YouTube, mm-hmm. the cousins or the little kid across the street or whoever. And I got girl, I got I got two girls and two young girls, one and a one and a nine year old. Yeah. And for me, it's like you must the kids. My kids are far more important than I am. Mm-hmm. Let's just start right there. I definitely don't come before my kids. Uh, to be honest with you, shit, I won't even put myself before my mom. Uh, right. I tell my mom this before, like if we both hanging off a cliff, I'm dead because yeah. I'm pushing you up. <laughs> like so. Right. Uh, yeah, I place a strong emphasis on myself, but my wife, my kids, my mom, like, this is just a different situation with them. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't put myself before them because it's like if we got two pieces of bread, I got to make sure that y'all both ate before I'm going to even get a bite. Right. So um, I feel as though it's very important for me to show them what it is that a man looks like. Mm-hmm. Not a male, mm-hmm. the man to show them how a man takes care of his family, how a man Mm -hmm. loves a woman, how a man Mm -hmm. takes care of his mother, how a man is a brother, how a man is all the things that a man needs to be. Mm -hmm. And I believe that I have to be not just present because a lot of us are, a lot of dudes are present by just being in the house and being around, but you're not available. Right. It's a huge difference in being present and being available. Right. So it's a lot of times where, Okay. we've been stuck in the house for the last two years and sometimes my daughter just wants to show me that she can turn and swirl into a circle mm-hmm. and it's like you don't give a fuck for real but you have to sometimes go all right let me put the phone down let me not watch this game because it's more important for her to just show me this and me to just show some interest because right. it's like you can't never lose sight of the fact that you was eight that mm-hmm. you was six that you was three and you were doing this same shit to your mom and dad. Well, they didn't right. give a fuck what you were talking about. Right, right. But you remember if those times that you were being ignored and then felt like, all right, well, I got to go overboard to get a little attention. Right, right, right. So you can't never lose sight of that. Plus, you got to always think about it. It's like you look up and damn, they 10, they 12, they 15. Yeah. Yeah, and now, by, you, now you going, hey, look, come show daddy. You can do it. And it's like, well, no, my friends is here now. And right, I got this right. One, I got that going on. Yeah. So you got to just be available. Like I said, yeah. uh, got to be available and present. Not just I'm home, I'm here, but mm-hmm. we can't get a word in with you and you never doing anything with us. Like That's right. a totally different situation. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're totally right on that shit. And um, man, I'm just, you know, being teaching my kids the way I was raised, man. You know, it, it was passed down. And um uh, Man, I'm passing it down to them. You know, I was, I was raised by my grandmother, so, <laughs> so my my parents of, actually, my parents was see, Chicago go, bound. So, see a lot of a lot of this shit don't now be people don't be having those same values and principles and shit that they be instilling in their kids. They Times let YouTube, they let YouTube, but see, that's one of the things I hate that people always do say when they be yeah. like, "Man, it's 2022 with." parenting or anything relationships or anything shit Mm -hmm. goes a certain way Mm -hmm. once you start putting in all these new innovations and all this different shit that's how Mm -hmm. things get messed up and we get problems and now your kids is walking into school with an ar and all that that's 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 right you're right those is the problems right there is trying to have all these different innovations and shit that don't need to be there Mm -hmm. like uh again this whole topic that we're going with is putting too much emphasis on yourself this is a problem we got as a society is we think we too important. Like we think that the world, the sun and the moon revolves around us and it don't. And you got to understand that some things ain't about you. Some things are about other people and the next person. Just like something we just was talking about where 
it's been a thousand different situations that I'll try to put another podcast or another person another in another situation because somebody can bring something to me and I will go, that's not a good fit for me, but I know it's a good fit for you. you right. So it was like, all right, y'all looking for a group podcast, but I'm a solo show. So let me call Jock and see if they want to do this. Mm-hmm. Let me call the weird ones or uh, BTG or like I can make a call to a bunch of different people for you. It's just probably not a situation that'll work out for me. But you, again, if you have it in your head and understand it, it's not always about you. Mm-hmm. You aren't that important to everybody else. Like it's not so much of an emphasis. You need to put that emphasis on you, but you can't expect the world puts that emphasis on you. Right. And that's just like a thing that gets kind of lost in translation with us these days is everybody because of Instagram and the different social media platforms, I can make up a dance and now everybody's following my new fucking dance. And mm. now I'm the most important thing on Wednesday. Mm. But by Thursday, somebody else to me to dance and now they're the most important thing. Yeah. I totally agree. Totally agree. All right. I switch up the conversation now. Uh the podcast goes into talking a little bit about Jock. Something I want to throw at you. You brought this up earlier and I let it go because I knew I was bringing it back. Mm-hmm. Y'all took a break uh, from the uh, All Out show. Yeah, Y'all had took a break and when y'all mm-hmm. came back you got on and said, I never even told you about this because I knew I was trying to get you on an episode so we could do it on, on the air. You said that you lost one of your best friends. Yeah. Uh, God, it yeah. was like your brother. Yeah. And yeah. Totally, I totally can relate to that situation. Cause yeah. I lost that exact same guy for myself. Yeah. Uh, funny enough, we was coming to Mississippi that weekend. Uh, my brother, Chris, Chris calls me the day before he dies and randomly just says like, yo man, I'm proud of you. Y'all been doing a lot with the podcast. I got a, a festival to go to in Mississippi. I sold in Mississippi uh, this weekend and I want you to go with me. He like it to give us a chance to hang out. We ain't really got a chance lately. And, you know, yeah. it'll be good networking. So I'm like, all right, let me look up the flights or whatever and see what it is. Because then I told him my wife is pregnant. His wife was pregnant. Mm-hmm. So then we, damn, that's crazy. Our kids get to grow up together and all of that like we did. The mm-hmm. next day, Chris dies. Yeah. So when you talked that. about this, on when you talked about that on the podcast and it was like, man, I'm going through this and trying to get that. And I'm like, this is the reason we do these shows is because... Again, it's not always about what it is that you got going on. The mm-hmm. shit that you're talking about makes it easier for somebody else maybe to deal with that. Somebody else may be dealing with that exact same situation. Right. And the right. same way that you all the way down to Mississippi going through that, I'm up here in Philly going through the exact same thing. Right. So that was something that I wanted to throw at you on the air because I know, like you said, y'all took that break and y'all took that pause and you had real life situations going on. But yeah. this is why this is why we do these. Is mm-hmm. because you never know what somebody else is getting out of the shit that you do. Yeah, man, it was it was it was a tough time. It still uh, actually it bothers me now. I was looking through some pictures yesterday, and uh, man, it, it brought tears to my eyes, man, because I'm so used to this, you know, this person being around. And uh, not only that, but you know, we he we lost lost other uh, friends, man. Actually, two of his cousins. Uh, we were all like brothers, man, and and they're all gone now. And it's it's tough. I'm telling you, it's tough. So I kind of feel alone. Um, you know, I got all the comrades, but you know, those guys was you know from the from the ground floor, man. I've been knowing them all my life, and uh, yeah, it hurts. So yeah, it, it's it, it's tough, man. Day by day, it's tough. I think about it. I stay busy to keep my mind off this shit. I mean, copy that. Like I said, I can hear that because I've been through the same situation. But I wanted to bring mm-hmm. that up on the show to let you know you talking copy. about that can yeah. help. A million different people with that same situation don't yeah. feel like it's just you don't feel like i'm going through this and nobody else can relate to the situation yeah. because the way that the world works now and this is one of those good things about it being this many years 2000 whatever mm-hmm. is that you can get on the internet and connect with people in, across the world who think exactly like you yeah. going through the same shit that you go through and mm-hmm. it make it easier for you to cope with that mm-hmm. but um now Let's talk about the All Out show a little bit. And let's talk about the solo show. When should we expect the solo show to drop? I'm looking uh, at January 17th uh, for the first episode to drop. So I'm I'm in works right now uh, for January the uh, first 17th. episode. That's my, yeah. that's my daughter's yeah. birthday. That's Kyle's birthday. Yeah. Yeah, that's, a good, that's, that's a great day. <laughs> that's a great day. I'm looking and forward f- to it. 
Damn, happy birthday, Kai. This is the day this episode is dropping, January 17th. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Um, so what should we expect differently from the solo show from the All Out show? Well, the, the solo show is going to be different. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a, just a little bit of humor in it, but it's going to be um, more on some serious serious topics, uh, especially with guests, uh, having from music artists to up-and-coming entrepreneurs, uh, I'm, I'm trying to be more diverse with it. You know, people all across the board from diff- different uh, ethnic ra- backgrounds. And um, whereas to the All Out show, it's more comedy. It's more humor uh, as a group. And that's a group show. Um, so the solo show is, is, is going to be dope, man. I got a, a great lineup coming up of guests that's coming on. And of course, yeah, you're going to be on there. Uh, so be looking forward to that shit. And you already so, know, um, yeah, so this was another one that I got from the solo show. Shouts out to Q Lewis, the E Block Radio Network. Mm-hmm. Um, I heard Q on with y'all, and just listening to the shit that Q was saying, I'm like, hey, Unc, you gotta plug me in with this nigga. I like the way this nigga's talking, yeah, and yeah, made it happen, that, made it, made it happen. That. And now we made have him Monday. I'm saying you'll be watching this video, uh, on Mondays on the E Block mm-hmm. Radio Network. Catch that yeah. out, let me mm-hmm. check that out, <laughs> yeah. Man, um, that's another guy, man. Um, chopped it up with him the other day, too, man. Uh, wish me happy New Year's and all, man. And, uh, man, uh, great guy. That group, uh, E Block Radio, man, that's a great group. Uh, really, really look up to Q. Q is a very smart young man because he's younger than I am. <laughs> but, uh, yes, he, he's very smart, man. And uh, I admire him a lot, just like I do you. I, I could be in both of you guys. Because you guys put in the work, man. You put in the work. Hey, man. You can't expect the results without the work. This is why I always tell That's people right. I'm busy, but I love the work. I ain't never complaining about the work. Yeah. Um, shouts out to Q, E Black Radio. They're supposed to be sliding out for the live show February 20th, 6 p.m. at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> um, tell me this, up. though. Now, uh, how is it working with your wife on the All Out show? Having your wife on with the team having on with Rod and having on with Jason. <laughs> How does that dynamic work? Because her, her and the ROD always going at it on the show. <laughs> they, they, they love to go in. She loves to get on him, but uh, you know, I have to commend her too because you know she's she's sticking with me on it. You know, um, you know, in the beginning it was it was a, a little bit different because we had uh, another uh, co-host on, uh, but things didn't work out, and uh, nothing but love still here. But it was another female on, by the way. Her name was the Queen. The Queen, yeah, yeah. yeah I remember those days. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, things uh, didn't work out. Uh, so, you know, it ended up being just my wife. And she, I, I, in the beginning, after that happened, after she wasn't on no, anymore, I thought my wife probably was going to kind of, you know, back down from it by her being just the only female. But no, she hung in there, man. She backed me up, and uh, and I commend her for that. And she she gives the ROD hell <laughs> every week, so uh, it's, it's comedy, man. It's it's fun. It's as fun. a new as a person coming brand new to the Jack Johnson podcast, mm-hmm. uh, that's the one that has the all out show. That's the one that has the whole team on it. Mm-hmm. So, which episode would you say is the one that they should go to to get a great feel for who y'all are? Ooh. Um, Man, there's so many. <laughs> I think give me, a, episode, give me a couple then. You ain't gotta just give me one, give me two or three then. Now this this recent episode, um, this one was just dropped the other day, uh episode 85. That one, that one, and um I would say episode 80, I say episode 75, I think, would be dope. Um man, in the in the earlier shows. Uh, we were still kind of, you know, trying to find out, find ourselves, as they say. Uh, but man, those earlier shows, check out the earlier shows from episode, I think, five on up to like 20. Man, there's some humor in that shit, man. It's, it's, it's funny as hell, man. So, Just like you said in those beginning stages, we all are rough right. those first couple because you don't understand what you leave, what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And, um, this is something that was one of those reasons why I did the seminars, why I did the hot hustle seminars. Mm-hmm. Um, it's because I wish we had somebody there in the beginning to tell us like, 
yo, you shouldn't do it that way or you should go about it this mm-hmm. way. Or there's a million different ways to go at this and just give you those little nuggets and things that you just have no idea about. And yeah. those things that will help you make the show so much better if you knew that shit. Mm-hmm. So that was one of the main reasons that I went there. But don't, I mean, those first couple, we all rough in the beginning. It's yeah. just because we don't know what the fuck, we don't know what we're doing. No. And no. it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine for everybody to admit that the first yeah. couple episodes is going to be rough. We was fucking <laughs> green, man. Because, you know, we started out talking about doing sports and all that shit. And, and it turned into more comedy than it did anything. So um, that's when the All Out Show came about because it was just a Jock Johnson podcast in the beginning for the first couple of episodes. And, and one night I was just sitting there after an episode, we was just talking, talking shit, you know, just having fun. And these guys was all over the place. And that shit popped in my head. I was like, you know what? This shit ought to be called the All Out Show because we all out on everything. We over, you know, we covering everything, man. Just And, and then we're having fun with doing it. So that's what All Out Show came in. The episode when y'all had Kay Renee on, shouts out to Kay, and mm-hmm. R.O.D. wouldn't let Kay live. <laughs> no, no, man. He was, he was shooting his shot. He emptied a full clip at Kay on that episode. That, that's that who he was. Been, that might have been my favorite episode was that one with Kay because he wasn't letting her ass live. Now, he wanted hey. Kay. He was trying to get Kay. He was trying to suck Kay through the phone. Yeah, he was. <laughs> <laughs> He was, man. I'm talking about that's that's him, man. That's that's who he is. And uh, very, very uh fun guy. He he's on he 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 likes to have fun, man. He likes to talk shit. And that's who he is. So hey, let him do his thing. So before we wrap up uh episode 49, Onk, I appreciate you coming on. Mm-hmm. Uh been trying to, like I said, been trying to make this one happen for a while. Glad to be finally digging to make it happen. Yeah. Uh, throw out your handle and let the listeners know where they can follow you at and uh, where y'all available at. Yeah, uh, you can follow me on uh, on IG at uh, Jock, Jock, Jock J Podcast. And of course, you can follow the Solo Show Podcast page at The Real Jock Johnson. And of course, I'm available on uh, Facebook at the Jock Johnson Podcast. Got a group page on there. And uh, I even got a TikTok, man. I just, I just recently started. I hadn't been on that. Oh, but, shit. Uh, <laughs> but I got t- I got fucking TikTok too, man. People been like, man, what you get on TikTok? So I I finally put a. Yeah, page get you up, on man. Twitter. Huh? Yeah, I get you yeah. up on the and Twitter. I, and I got a Twitter page, man. I hadn't just been on it in a while. I got to get uh get back out there, man. And um yeah, but mainly I'm on Instagram a lot. I, I'm I'm just an Instagram freak, y'all. I'm sorry, but I'm on IG all the time, man. So y'all want to check the page out. Go on there and check the page off and click the link in the bio where you have access to all the uh, episodes from the beginning to now to the present. Of course, check out the merchandise too. I'm, I'm promoting on your shit. So, this is, always, <laughs> I, I, this is your time. I, I yeah. laid the floor out for you. Bounce yeah. pass. Lay it up so, now. So, check, <laughs> check out the merchandise too. Uh, just click the uh, link in the bio and click on merchandise and check it out. Got some new stuff coming up real soon. So, y'all check it out. Check out podcast and of course support it all right copy that shouts out to my mississippi folks again before we close it out y'all the live show february 20th 6 p.m at the barn tickets are available right now i appreciate you coming on that was episode 49 we are out appreciate you hitting the button welcome to the how to hustle podcast with hype follow me on instagram and twitter at i am hype that's h-y-m-p-e it's hype it's not hype i'm not geeked up